moving on to informational items. And luckily, uh, fortunately, we have Gray Robinson here in person today to hear our update from Robert Stewart. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, good to be with everybody this morning. Uh, Robert Stewart from the Gray Robinson Law Firm on behalf of uh, our team at Gray Robinson. Uh, happy holidays, and uh, we're excited about another year of representing PSTA and working on your priorities in Tallahassee. Just a brief update, uh, since your last uh, meeting when we were on the call, it's been a relatively slow time uh, in Tallahassee. There was one committee meeting <coughs> week in November. Uh, the legislature largely took off the month of December. The House did not meet at all last week, which was their previously scheduled um, uh, committee meeting week. The House didn't come up at all. The Senate only came up for the purposes of designating their new president, uh, and that'll be Andy Gardner out of Orlando. Uh, currently the chairman of the Transportation Economic Development Appropriations Committee and a guy who um, thinks regionally, kind of gets transit, um, born and raised in the city of Orlando, so kind of knows the urban core uh, and, and how transit plays an important role in, in an economy. I think he'll be a friend to transit, particularly because he seems to be coming in at a time uh, when the budget is more flush than it's been in the last several years. Uh, the cuts that that departments and, uh, and entities and industries across the state have had to take from state government aren't really there right now. They're, they're facing about a billion dollar surplus coming into the, the, the coming session. And, uh, and over the course of the next couple of years, the, the, the estimates are that that surplus will at least maintain itself, if not continue, as the economy continues to rebound. Uh, in Florida. So uh, that, that was really the only legislative work that took, on, that took place in the month of December. Uh, budget talks are still kind of ongoing uh, at the agency level. Um, the DOT, we had some meetings with them not, not too long ago, and they, they are projecting uh, a surplus, again, like everybody else is, and they're projecting probably another increase in that state transportation block grant money uh, that is then formulaically divided amongst the transit agencies. And so I think that's good news for PSTA. Uh, that we'll be working on um, from a from a specific appropriation level, and this will be something money feedback on. I think is when we last spoke, there was talk about um, uh, some of the transit hubs that y'all were looking at trying to fund, and uh, you were talking to the DOT about the five-year work plan and whether or not you were in or not in, and kind of that. We need to, I think, get some guidance from from the committee here and also from the board on what you'd like us to accomplish, try to accomplish on that going forward next session, given the surplus. No, 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 I'm telling you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so there's that, that that I think we just need some guidance on from a policy perspective, or from, a, from an appropriations perspective. Um, and then on the policy side, I know there's still ongoing conversations about the swap issue and, and what to do um, next session about that. I, I, I will tell you our conversations um, in Tallahassee continue to be that, that I think we, we face the same fate potentially um, uh, as we did a couple of years ago uh, if we were to successfully pass that uh, in the coming session. Say that uh, piece again. The, the, on, on the tax swap. I think when, when the governor vetoed it a couple of years ago, even though we were able to get it through uh, Tallahassee, the legislative right. side. Well, let me give you an update. Please, I'd love one. I don't think we've met formally. I'm Janet Long. Hi, Janet. Robert Stewart, nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. I am a former legislator right. that served with Sandy at our joint county commission uh, legislative delegation meeting. There was a huge brouhaha between Senator Latvala and one of our former PSTA board members, Commissioner Roach, mm -hmm. because Commissioner Roach was advocating for the legislature to start that process going again. And because Senator Brandis is still adamantly opposed, there's a policy in the Senate that says as long as there's one senator who seriously objects, no other senator will sponsor it. So I think that's really dead in the water. Yeah, and, and I was going to... And then Brandis, Senator Brandis was there. He oh, yeah, he, and, he, and, so, and so Senator Latvala looked over at him and said, right, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> That's great feedback. Our, our most recent conversation with Senator Brandis was exactly that, that he hasn't moved off of this position, and, and yeah. that probably puts us where exactly where you just articulated that we were. Um, and uh, But again, we, we'll take direction from the committee and from the board, however you, however you hope, want us to go forward. Um, 
the only other uh, item that I would update you on, and obviously any questions or, or comments, we can we can discuss some other things. Is uh, looking forward to January and having um, members of PSTA up in Tallahassee with us for the for the committee week. I think the dates we target are January seventh and eighth. Does that sound right? Uh, Sixth and seventh. We arrive on the sixth. <coughs> okay. Um, it, knowing that now, and Tuesday, uh, January seventh is the. Day Main day. Okay, okay. And we arrive, arrive on the sixth. Okay, um, let's maybe offline uh, talk about those dates again. There's a little football game that's going on in California on January sixth, and the speaker of the house and the speaker designate. Speaker of the house is a big MSU fan. Uh, his brother played there. The speaker designate of the house went to Auburn, uh, and uh, many of the legislators, both in the house and senate, are traveling to Pasadena for that football game. Uh, on the 6th and not arriving back in Tallahassee until the 7th. And there was chatter just last week in Tallahassee that, that the House and, and or the Senate may take some time off uh, again and not start anything until Wednesday. I know, of course they will. Uh, it, because of that game with so many folks being out of town for it. So we're going to get clearing, we're going to get finalization of that sometime in the next couple of days about what their, what their schedule is going to look like. Um, as Ms. Long knows, the, the schedules come out about two weeks in advance uh, during committee weeks. And, and we'll know what the calendar looks like, and then from there we'll give our best advice on, on whether or not to bump that by a week or maybe come in February. If it looks like there's not going to be enough members of the delegation or the leadership in town to actually have some good policy meetings, substantive meetings with members of the House and Senate during that particular week. So, again, next week we should know what the calendars look like. Um, I think with that, really any questions that you've got, uh, like I said, I think the budget looks really good in Tallahassee com compared to previous years and um, uh, and so I think some feedback on where we are with, with the priority uh, specific appropriation projects and where that stands in the DOT work plan and how we can help bump those up or, or expedite uh, and then, um, where, where and then is, once I know where we are in Tallahassee with the schedule we'll, we'll advise. Yes. Where is, uh, is Ed Cooper still on transportation? He is still chairs Ted approach uh, for at least for the final session that he's there. Well, because he's trying to get on the county commission, mm -hmm. he may be of value in terms of working really hard on our priorities. And, and when so we yeah. met with him on those appropriation priorities, he, his advice was, we'll find out where you are in the work plan and then let me go. To, if you're not in there at all, it becomes, as you know, more difficult. But if you're there, then you can work on bumping those up. Uh, right. So, to get well, and I apologize. I believe, I think, uh, I know Gray Robinson has our legislative priorities and I didn't I should have put it in the packet yeah. knowing you were gonna be here. But um uh, we we have our the PSA board has approved a list of legislative priorities for this year that has is responsive to Representative Hooper and uh, your information. So um, I don't have that uh, list readily readily available but it is I there's a little bit of chicken scratch in there but there's one. Oh, okay. Uh, and, I, and I should have brought that with me, so I apologize uh, in, my, in my possession. The dollar asks are smaller. We have confirmed that all of those items are in the work program. So Representative Hooper's claim, our concern last year is no longer an issue. And well, put some more general items in there, too. I think we have to be a bit cautious because he has expressed in different places opposition to the Yes. Well, uh, again, we... Um, Keep your eye on the ball. Uh, we also were mindful of various opinions on Greenlight uh, up there. And hey. Well, Justin, the question I have is in the plan, whose plan? Is it the DOT plan? Is yeah. it the MPO plan? Uh, it, the I'm, DOT plan is what uh, Representative Hoover was talking about. Five year work program. Five year DOT plan. So they can accelerate projects in there, but if it's not the FDOT plan, it, but it's on our list, they don't have much opportunity. That's the new hurdle. They have to get in there. Upper. The good news, I think, for us is I think, I think you have two, Brad. Oh, no, I was just saying, in this yeah. discussion, we have a very important person back there with the DOT. Uh, we? Uh, well, I mean, there is uh, great positive comments coming out of the secretary of FDOT in terms of everything that we're doing and they are talking 
a lot about the plans that they're working on for the future. Yeah. So they coincide with what we're doing. So hopefully it'll be good, right? Absolutely. Got to have a plan. We're going to talk about that in a couple minutes. <laughs> do, do you think it is likely that they will um, set the schedule next week during the Christmas week? Or how are we going to? Well, they're, you know, they're, um, the legislature is on a two week notice right now for committee meetings, for, for, for scheduled committee meetings. So uh, they, they have to, if they're going to have a meeting, it has to be posted and uh, uh, I guess announced two weeks out. So um, I, I do expect that we'll have a pretty good picture of what the calendar is going to look like come, uh, come next week. I can say with a relative amount of confidence that there's not going to be any meetings of any substance on that Tuesday um, when the game is actually going on in in Pasadena. Wednesday is a possibility because some of the folks Tuesday are, is the 7th. Excuse me, on Monday, on Monday the 6th. Okay. okay. Um, and then on Tuesday the 7th, they, they'll be back at some point on Tuesday the 7th, and then they'll decide whether or not to hold meetings that afternoon or wait until Wednesday the 8th to hold any meetings. But I can say relatively confidently that Monday's going to be a dead day. Um, given the, the travel schedules of some of the members that are, that are planning to go to the game. Well, I'm just wondering for our committee, since uh, whether we should make any decisions now or wait or what would you think? Well, I mean, there is a possibility they could just cancel on that week and move it to the next week, isn't it? Yeah, there's, a, there's another set of committee meeting weeks the following week, no. which, which I am confident will be very busy because they're at least going to lose a day, maybe two, right if not the whole week of this week, uh, of, of that first committee week in January. So that week of the, the 13th, Monday the 13th and on, will be a busy uh, week in Tallahassee for sure. Uh, and we'll just have, we'll know by the end of next week, by the middle of next week, how, how the following, or how the previous week looks that we can fix. Okay. So, so it's the 7th and, and two. It's the 7th and 8th, not the 6th and the 7th? It's the, well, our plan to visit was to leave PSPA on the 6th, Monday the 6th, uh, same day as the FSC game, and then uh, be up there, drive up there on the 6th, be there on the Tuesday the 7th, come back Tuesday night. Um, is there any um, possibility, well, I mean, this holiday weekend too, that they would just not do anything and postpone it? Because, I mean, you have to get the six coming up, which is a uh, short week, and that money, they got to travel. And can, that's what you mean cancel the entire week? I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying. And yeah, not they may. Until after the new year. I, I, don't, I was going to ask Janet, but I don't know if they've ever done that. From Christmas yeah. break to yeah. Yeah. I mean, new year. They can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Well, if, for instance, they were, they were scheduled, the house was scheduled to meet all of last week when, when, when they built their calendar originally back in August. They had scheduled to be all of last week in Tallahassee, and the house ended up taking the whole week off because they just wanted to. So yeah, they can they can do yeah, they can cancel the week if they if they. Well, the reason I'm asking is because if they, if they take in and go out there when FSU is victorious, I don't see them jump on the plane and fly right back and get the little guys. No, no, no disrespect. I just don't. I don't see that. So, yeah, it's not the Brad, follow up. We could send out an email and get um, a set of dates, back updates, and just. Yeah. Yeah. Look at rescheduling us. I, I do know the next Monday, Tuesday combination is the 13th, 14th, but yep. then after that on the 20th and 21st, the 20th is the Dr. King holiday. Right, and, and there's no meeting yeah. scheduled in Tallahassee for that week. The next, after the week of the 13th, their next time up is the first week in February. And let me give you those dates I've got here. So they meet, technically they meet the week of the 6th, but again, we talked about the, the challenges there, mm -hmm. January 6th. The week of the 13th will be a, a busy week because of uh, the days they've lost. And then they're back up there February, uh, the week of February the 3rd. But I just, I mean, I was, I was having my, my AA, I was clear. I was going to have to set it up, but I just got put on hold to see what's going on. Another comment I had, the um, city president, I think that's going to be a great friend for transportation because they have that little thing called the Miami to Orlando connector they're doing on the, on the East Coast. And um, I guess we should get some info from that for one of our transportation objectives. 
Yeah, I think just generally there's a lot of good momentum. I think, Representative, you, you very clearly are feeling the good positive momentum that's coming in transportation. Um, the DOT's very well run, very well thought of in Tallahassee. The governor's a big fan of this secretary. Uh, they work hand in hand on, on priorities. Uh, and I just think with the surplus, with the positive vibes in Tallahassee about transportation and infrastructure spending, I think it is just a good time for, for transit, for transportation generally. Uh, and this Senate president, like I said, kind of gets it. Uh, this incoming Senate president kind of gets it. Um, and of course, the way the power structure kind of flows in Tallahassee, the session before you become the presiding officer is really when you're at your peak. So Senator Gardner in this final session before he actually becomes the Senate president really is in a position where he can wield some influence on, on priorities. And so we'll be meeting with him about um, PSTA's uh, big priorities here in the coming weeks and months. The one, the one legislative issue that I've been reading about that um, may have an impact on us, the um, governor's proposal to cut the auto registration fees um, or reduce it back, it seems like it has some strong support. Yeah. Um, I believe that, well, I believe that, that money, some of that money may go to transportation generally um, and specifically the um, Commission for Transportation Disadvantage, the low income money that we get for bus pass, low income bus passes. Um, but at least Lisa Bacot, uh, who is with the executive director of the Florida Public Transit, told, uh, sent out a thing, and she used to be the executive director of the Commission for Transportation Disadvantaged, um, didn't think that the portion that goes to the transportation disadvantage would be affected, but I don't know. We'll, we'll chase that. I, I haven't heard that, and if, and if Lisa says that it won't be, then I would probably defer to her better judgment. We, I'm happy to chase that um, for you and find out if that's, if that's accurate. I know that the governor, uh, will, the, the idea of rolling back those fees started in the Senate. Joe Negron, the, um, the Senate budget chair, has been pretty clear that he wanted to do that from the outset uh, back in the late summer, early fall. The governor's hopped on the bandwagon and wants to help roll those back. I think $25 a tag or whatever it is. Whatever was increased two or three years ago, roll that back to what it was before the increase. Um, and I, my understanding of what the legislature and the governor want to do is they don't want to, they don't want to take away, they don't want to cut anywhere. So any, any, any loss that's taken from that re reduction of the fee would be offset by the other increases that the budget's feeling in other places okay. so that nobody really, the only person who feels the cut is the consumer who's paying the fee. At least that's how they've articulated it. It doesn't always go that way and we'll chase that to make sure that that's accurate. Thank you very much. And um, so we will move on to our, our next update on the uh, State Road 60 interchange and regional priorities. Let me um, give a little brief intro to Bob Clifford, the Executive Director of TBARDA. Welcome, Bob and Ming Gao uh, with Florida DOT. And just highlight that um, uh, at least I'm, I'm amongst uh, friends here taking credit for the PSTA Legislative Committee, or I think the Legislative Committee should take a little bit of credit for helping PSTA formulate support for the Howard Franklin Bridge um, uh, multimodal um, option that the, the Secretary has supported. Uh, and in a little, in a small way, it was at the Legislative Committee and uh, Chair Danner talking at our last meeting that started getting some more discussion about the need to also focus on the Memorial Interchange, the 60 Interchange um, that we talked about here and then that went on to talk about at the ACPT and at T-BARDA. Um, and it actually uh, produces results or it can produce results if we and get some momentum behind some of these things. Um, 
Take it away, Bob. Thank you, Brad. Bob Clifford, uh, T. Barta. And really, that goes to the point. There's a lot happening from a transportation perspective in this region. You know, we've talked about it in the plan. We've all had plans and, and thoughts in the future, but now you're actually seeing the results of those plans come to fruition. And uh, Brad had asked to give you a little bit of that big picture to see how all the, the, the pieces are lining up uh, for us within this region. Uh, that's connecting people and places. But one of the things that we look at from Tibarta is, is the issue of regional priorities. And, and what are we looking at from, from a regional perspective uh, of the key big picture projects that are out there. And we do it on an annual basis with a specific ask of, of what we're looking for on an annual basis so that we're constantly moving projects forward uh, in the pipeline so that we're going from that issue of lines on a map to actually implementation of those projects. This is uh, our board last uh, Friday actually adopted uh, these projects as, as the projects within the region uh, that are the, the regional priorities. I'm not going to go through all of them. What I want to focus on are the core of the region. And, and what we really refer to as the critical core of, of the entire Tampa Bay region. And, and going west to east and looking at what those projects are, you see obviously right in this area, in the Gateway area across the Howard Franklin Bridge, connecting to uh, Tampa International Airport and ultimately uh, an intermodal center in the West Shore area. Uh, as Brad mentioned, the I-275 State Road 60 Memorial Interchange, uh, and then express lanes on the interstate system, which again uh, offer opportunity for transit as part of uh, that, uh, th that project. But first, just looking at what we refer to as the Gateway Connector, really looking at connecting the Bayside Bridge with St. Pete Clearwater Air Airport, US-19, and I-275. Project's been on the books for a while, it's ready to go. And one of the things that's critically important about it is, and there's local money in the game. Pinellas County's got $70 million of local funds in that project, ready to go. Uh, the, the timing is right to go ahead and ask for that project to be fully funded and do it as a design build project and move that project forward so that on this side of, of the core of the region, the, that critical link is completed uh, and moves forward and it obviously ties in uh, very closely with the effort of Greenlight Pinellas and, and the activities that go on with that. Then we go to the Howard Franklin Bridge and, and what, what's happy to say is we've all partners, PSTA, the Pinellas MPO, FDOT and T-BARTA all work together uh, on, on this project and, and to be able to look at this project knowing we had to replace one of the structures Ming will go into the, the details uh, with you on that, but knowing we have to replace one of the structures, being able to move forward and get this project moving. And when I say moving, what's interesting about it is it's not just a thought of it's going to happen in the future. DOT's put it in the tentative work program at, at over $400 million. And I was telling uh, Councilman Johnson er, earlier, Johnson earlier, one of the things that's really uh, exciting about that is, and it's not with capacity money it's with bridge replacement money, which is really important for, for those transportation geeks like myself because it doesn't kind of go against our ledger, if you will, of where the money's coming from, from a capacity perspective. You know, you, you have X amount of money each area is gonna get for capacity. This project doesn't come against that list, if you will, because it's, 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 a, it's an operational and maintenance and bridge replacement issue. So that's really important as we start to look at as these projects uh, cycle together. All the activity that's going on at Tampa International Airport uh, going on there as they uh, begin the first phases of their master plan. Uh, the first uh, billion dollar uh, part of that is, is creating a consolidated rental car facility. Those of us, I know uh, several members, uh, uh, Jeff, one day I know we went down to Miami, saw the Miami the build, saw the Miami Intermodal Center. That's, this is Tampa's version uh, of that and the first pieces uh, uh, of the creation of that. And the first element is, is creating that people mover from the existing terminal to the area that's over by where the post office is today as they develop their consolidated rental car facility. We're also partnering presently, T-BARTA is with FDOT and Tampa International Airport. As we look at then, how do you connect into the West Shore area proper? Uh, and create a regional intermodal center in West Shore where, where all the different modes of transportation can come together uh, in, in kind of what we see as the geographic center of the region and then disperse around the region. 
the whole point of, of, of Greenlight Pinellas and, and the, the, the transit piece connecting across the bay, that's where it's going to connect into. So as we start moving these pieces forward, you're seeing all of them come together uh, and actually from an implementation perspective, this being the first part of, of putting that $272 million project from the terminal uh, to, the, to the post office area for the consolidated rental car facility. The State Road uh, 60 Memorial I-275 interchange. Think about it, and, and, we're, and Ming's got some maps for you to show you. It's really the heart of the region transportation-wise. When you think about right at that area, right around the West Shore Mall, where it all kind of comes together between I-275, both directions across Howard Franklin and from uh, downtown Tampa and I-4 uh, coming uh, from the east. You also have the Veterans and Suncoast Parkways all coming together. We've got Tampa International Airport, another regional facility. You also have West Shore, uh, the West Shore Business District, uh, the largest business district in the, in the uh, state of Florida. And one thing I'll let you know, share with you, when you add up the number of jobs and square footage in West Shore and in Gateway combined, those two areas separated just by the Howard Franklin Bridge, by this core area we're talking about, it's the largest business district in the southeastern United States behind Atlanta, so it's number two. Wow. Think about that, what that means, and that's very important regionally, because as we all recognize, jobs are, people are coming from everywhere around the region to get to jobs. And, and, and these two areas together are critically important, so that's why we see what we're calling the critical core project, all of these pieces are all coming together. Uh, as, as we start to, to move forward. Then you look at the Express Lanes project, uh, beginning uh, that activity of creating Express Lanes, uh, toll lanes in the interstate system uh, that will allow transit to utilize those lanes, guarantee you a, a level of service. Those have been on I-95 down in, in South Florida. This is the concept we're talking about uh, in, in utilizing as part of that. And we really start to see all the different pieces come together of you know, we're, we're talking about roadway, we're talking about transit, we're talking about airport, we're talking about the issue of not just moving people, but goods, and the issue of getting them to jobs and to areas within the region. Where we see is important and wanted to share that with you is, they all go together. So what's important on these projects are, it's just as important to Pinellas County and Manatee County and Pasco County and everywhere else as it is to Hillsborough County and vice versa. The, the projects in the Gateway area on Howard Franklin Bridge are just as important to Hillsborough and Pasco as they are to Pinellas. And, and you know, making that point, so from Tibarda's perspective, looking at it regionally, that's why we saw this was so absolutely critical uh, to be able to, to look at these collectively together and to make the point that what we're excited about, and I can tell you, having worked on this for many years, first at DOT and now the last five with T-BARTA, we're no longer talking about lines on a map. We're not talking about showing people maps. We're talking about real projects with real construction and, and really moving forward. That's a big deal. That's a much different place we are than we've been in the past. So we wanted to share that with you. Where we've been, state legislative delegation, where, where I've, been, I've been going around uh, to the state legislative delegation. Uh, they're very excited that, that they actually are, are one of the areas where the issue of T-BARTA doing regional priorities came from. Came from the, the legislative delegation and from the FDOT secretary saying, we need you, T-BARTA, to step up regionally and tell us this is the, these are the things we need to be working on from a transportation perspective. At the congressional level, uh, also working in that and really working with all of the various partners. I mentioned you all earlier, you've been uh, obviously a big partner uh, uh, with us all in terms of the whole green light plan, but then Howard Franklin and then all the rest of these pieces uh, coming together. So that's where we are, we're excited. Uh, we think good things are already happening in the work program. We're uh, anticipating some more good things happening this legislative session. Uh, going back to the, to the report you heard from your lobbyist, we're hearing the exact same thing. We expect it's going to be a very good year for transportation. And one of the things that we're hearing is the view in Tallahassee is, and for the first time in a long while, the Tampa Bay region has its act together and is asking us for the same things. What was important from T. Barta's perspective was 
the representatives from Citrus and Sarasota were saying the same thing that the representatives from Pinellas and Hillsborough were saying is, this is important to us all, that we need to be doing that. So with that, Madam Chair, that, that's all I, I wanted to, to share with you all. Any questions you all might have, but we're pretty excited. The good stuff's happening. Great, great. Thank you so much, Bob. Sure. This is a, a lot to digest. I know we have a question right off the bat from Commissioner Long. I do, and thank you for your presentation. I'm wondering if you have any updated information on how the elected officials in Hillsborough are approaching the transportation issues, uh, especially given that at our Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council meeting, I think it was last week, yes, we uh, Commissioner Chris voted against supporting the Green Light initiative. Not just Chris, all three Hillsborough yeah. representatives. He was the main one. <laughs> a couple, there's two, two, two answers, I'll give you that. two elements of, the, of one answer, if you will. One is Hillsborough is presently, uh, they, they have a group working together, they, they call it their uh, Transportation Leadership Policy Group, consists of uh, the mayors of the three cities in, in Hillsborough <coughs> County, uh, the county commissioners, uh, and the heart chair. And they're looking at, at transportation, you know, what, what are the things they need to be looking at? One of the things they've heard is, what does Hillsborough County, you know, what's its vision? Where are they going from a transportation perspective? It's been a little disjointed, and they've heard that pretty, pretty loudly and are trying to look at that. One of the key factors they're looking at is economic development opportunities and, and tying it to transportation. So that's one track that's on that, that we've all been participating, we've been participating, I know FDOT has participated, all the different entities with them and, and we're, we believe we'll start to see some ideas uh, and potentially some projects and direction out of them in the coming months. They're still trying to formulate, all right, well, if we've got projects, how do we actually implement them? And, and that means obviously the issue of funding. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's one of the things that's going on presently. The other thing I will tell you is, is you know, uh, from T. Barta's perspective, I've heard quite a bit and uh, Councilman Downer knows this because we, we talked about it at the T. Barta, member, the T. Barta meeting the other day, was the whole rest of the region is very interested in what you're doing with the green light plan. And, and, it's, and, it's, and, and I say that in, in a couple ways. It's not just because, well, are you going to be successful with a referendum or not? You know, obviously that's an, an, an interest. But it's also the issue of, of, of how they're seeing it, of tying the issue of economic development. And, and in cases, in some cases, redevelopment to the issue of transportation, because that's not an issue that is Pinellas centric. It, it, it's an issue that all the communities in this region have, and are looking at it from that perspective, and are and are really watching. You know, I, I can't tell you how often I get questions from elected officials in other parts of the region about what's Pinellas doing. You know, what's the, how are they working? And what's the plan? They're very interested. And so, you know, I, I think, you know, a lot of it is, Hillsborough's trying to do some things right now, but I also would tell you they're watching to see what happens uh, here. The other thing, the last thing I will say, I'm sorry for the long answer, but the last thing I will, I will tell you is um, more and more folks are, are starting to see the issue of you have to leverage local money. You know, I would tell you, Pinellas has had a long history of doing that. US 19 and the projects are a great example of that. I mentioned earlier the Gateway Project, $70 million of local money on that project. Those are the things that get it over the hurdle. Pasco County's doing some similar things. Hillsborough's not been as far along, but they're seeing that. Others are seeing that you've got to leverage money. You've got to say, I want this and here's my money. So that, that's the other thing that we're really seeing a, a, a change in, in, the, in, in the thought process and the strategy of how do you move forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Um, and, and good report, <laughs> as usual. If you could go back to your, I think it's your second slide, the regional priorities. Third slide, there it is. Um, I sit on the uh, Tampa Regional Planning Legislative uh, Committee also, and most of the um, the priorities you have there, they overline with what we have as priorities also. You know, I think I, think I gave mine to Manny. Right, and, 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 and another thing, uh, we having um, those different municipalities on the Regional Planning Council. I mean, it's, it's, it's a breath of fresh air because everybody, <coughs> they, they get it. 
you know, on our trip down to Miami, we, we got toured around all day long with Senator Mike, and I kept hitting him with the, oh, there's not solar panels on top of this building, and then he kept taking back at me. We had a good relationship, I thought. Anyway, he, uh, <laughs> he um, scratched that how important it was to, for the, the whole region to have one number one. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants something done, but the problem is, it's equivalent to crabs in a bucket. How do you fund them all? It makes it almost impossible for elected officials who are in charge of distributing these funds to be, uh, how can I say, um, 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 fully accountable to all the areas. But the benefit, the key thing is the benefit and the regional benefit is what they got to look at. And, 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 and as Commissioner Long said, we had a, a festive conversation uh, at our last regional I panel. like that festive. <laughs> <laughs> I got to use the seasons, but I got a little, both of us got a little, you know, passionate, if you will. Because, I mean, we're sitting in a room and it's all about regional uh, planning. You get all, all, the, all the bodies around and it all works together. I mean, even by virtue of looking at the map, and that's why I want you to bring this back up. But now this goes up to the bridge, and that's it. We have nothing to do with what happens on the other side of the bridge. So, hence, that's why we're trying to go to, uh, I, I guess, an independent area, which is transportation, international transportation, in an airport, okay, and hook up to the area in a mobile center. Now, on the other side of that would be Hillsboro and what they plan on doing. Correct. But what I sense from that meet that regional planning meeting is their equivalent to no if it's taken, there's my disclaimer, a woman scorned because their referendum was successful. We had three people for reasons unbeknownst to me, you should have heard the explanation, that didn't want to support a resolution supporting green light for Nellis, which don't make no sense. I mean we have oh, I thought it was my, my buzzer. We have, we have um <laughs> We, we have uh, uh, regional plans happening up in Pasco and all over, and we support anything in that region. We figure that the elected officials of that area have done their due diligence for their representatives, have, have done the analogies and the studies, and, and once they give their presentation, we have their support because it's a regional benefit. But not to even get the support of a resolution by three representatives from Hillsborough County, and, but they sit on a regional planning council. It, it boggles the mind. Bible's mind. Not that we needed it, but it would have made more sense. Like if they're having a, a, something they're doing on the other side of the bridge and it's good to them, it's going to be beneficial to them, I support it as a representative of the city of St. Pete. Because it's in the region, it's going to benefit the region. But it, it makes no sense. I mean, it was excuses like I haven't seen the financial studies. I don't know if this is going to work. I can't put taxes on people in Pinellas. It was, it was ludicrous. But with that mindset, it's going to be very difficult going forward. But what I would tell everybody in this room and everybody listening or watching, that you have to keep an eye on what's important uh, for the region. And we have to do our part. And collectively, it's going to benefit the whole body. Um, the, uh, the, the mindset is if, if we can't have it over here, we don't want them to succeed over there, it's not going to help anybody because we're not going to be able to get out of this. You brought up US-19, and I, I use that for an example for them over there, was that the way we keep the span in that road and the concrete and, and try to make it better and faster and more quick commute and the process slaughtering all those businesses down below. You know, when I worked for Xerox Corporation, that my territory was South St. Pete, all the way up to Port Richard, up 19. And I, I remember how it sprung and all the businesses and all the comrades and how the people benefited from all the traffic. Now you take that traffic and elevate it up 50 feet above them, no one's stopping. And below it is a ghost town. So well, we have to. We've got a few other people that right, we have, we have to, uh, in here. We have to be more cognizant on the benefit of everybody throughout the region as, as far as mass transit, transmit oriented development, and uh, moving people from A to B. And that's going to be important. It's going to benefit the whole region. So I do support uh, those priorities. I can tell you that our regional planning is on board with that. But I just, it's some hints going back and forth as to the angst about what's happening with the, uh, what they're doing in the, uh, uh, Hillsboro versus what's happening for Nella. Thank you. And lastly, Thank you. I, I Let, let's, let's hear from a few more people, um, if that's okay. Or I want to get a comment on, on, on the status of the heart, the thing that you deal with heart. Heart, the SDA. Right. Uh, we're, we're just, I can, I can answer that uh, question. Uh, we're, uh, we're in the process right now working with your staff. Uh, KPMG is doing the analysis. Uh, it's a fast burn. We didn't, you know, begin. Uh, the money wasn't released until you know, October. Uh, we have to report back to the legislature by February 1st. 
we actually have a meeting here tomorrow uh, with, uh, with staff uh, uh, and uh, the consultants just to kind of go over where we're at and you know, gather some more information and go through it. We'll be, uh, reports will be available and, and kind of the, the drafts in mid-January. We're all going to have to take a look at it quickly and uh, give our response. We're, we're, go, we're all going from the perspective, uh, Councilman, of we were asked a question and we're going to answer it. Uh, and uh, you know, just very simply stated, that that's kind of where we're at, and, and I think we've all been pleased so far how it's how it's been going. Were we received that information prior to the meeting to set up between CAR and CSK? The committee. We, uh, we have a meeting scheduled for the special PSTA board. Um, what are we calling it? Task force uh, for this, which is. I think you were a member. I think you volunteered to be on. I'm not sure if the other members did or not. Uh, for the 17th of January. So we'll have a back in time with the information that he's talking about. Yeah, that, that's where yes. the PSPA board. It's not with Hart. That's where the that's where the committee will hear from KPMG about the, the study, uh, about their findings of essentially what is the cost. Their estimation their detailed estimation of the cost savings of consolidating functions with art. So we're running about 20 minutes behind, but we have, I think, a couple more comments from Shannon Danner, Commissioner Long, and then we also have a FDOT presentation. So let's hear a couple of comments and let's stick to our agenda. Well, just real quick to you know, what, what Bob says too about the region watching, what I hear from the Tibarta members is, um, also, the fact that everyone here is at the table. There's there's seven counties represented at Tibarta. They each sit on some other transportation board, be it an MPO or their county's transit authority, but are noticing our relationship with MPO, PSTA, the Pinellas Planning Council, that hasn't really gelled in other places. So they're looking at that as well. That's true. So we're, um, we're that needs to be said so we continue that conversation. And those are the things that I think will resolve some of those issues in Hillsborough if you're not sure what the planning is or what the economic development is or what the different pieces are because you sit on one board and not the others. They, they are paying attention. I think those things will come around as well. Well, I just wanted to ask Bob, uh, based on some of the comments that C C uh, Councilman Newton made, if, if you might be able to present the same very concise presentation you made this morning at our tra regional transportation board meeting because the, the, the regional planning council meeting? Yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. What did I say? I'm sorry. Regional, because regional transportation. I think that's me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm sorry. But yeah, no, no worries. Absolutely. My concern here is everybody hears the message the same way, yeah. you know, when it's done by someone like yourself. And it's for the governor to be supporting some of the things that we've talked about this morning already, but then his appointment to the Regional Planning Council being so adamantly against the, the Greenlight Initiative is very troubling to me. So I think the more of this information that can be sure. shared, the better off we're going to be. Sure, I'll, con I'll contact staff. And that would be something. great. Sure. I will too. Right. So we'll do a double whammy. Thank you. Thank All right, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, uh, I wanted to introduce Ming Gao, and I apologize, Ming, I don't know your exact title. Um, you are F. Dot, um, I'm the planning guy. Planning guy. That's what I thought you were. Intermodal systems development. Okay, thank you. All right, so Bob gave you um, the big picture stuff, so I'm going to drill down some, to some uh, details uh, for you. Uh, today, basically, I'm going to go over some details on the How Franklin Bridge project as well as the uh, 275 and Stable 60 interchange project, and just to demonstrate to you how important uh, these projects are to this region. Um, first, let's, let me give you an update on the How Franklin Bridge project. Um, as you know, the project's over 50 years old, and um, basically we're talking about the northbound bridge. Um, that's the original How Franklin Bridge, and um, it's time to uh, replace it in the time frame you're looking at. It's basically between 2020 and 2025. So if you think about construction of the bridge, 
will probably take four to five years to complete. You really need to start at around 2020 in order to get to 2025 to have a new bridge in service. So that's why we're doing this study right now. And as Bob mentioned earlier, uh, it was really a joint effort uh, between four entities, you know, TBARTA, PSTA, the Pernilis MPO, and, and FDOT. Um, it, it came together and had, had a memorandum of understanding to move the project forward. And uh, we advanced the pd and &E study from uh, the year 2015 to, um, I think, 2011. Um, so um, that's where we're at, and, and, and we're close to finishing the, uh, the pd and &E study and make a recommendation uh, to Federal Highway Administration on our preferred alternative. Um, as you can see, um, you know, bridge is constantly under repair, and, and the existing bridge is really much lower than the, than the new southbound bridge. And when you have wave coming in, um, if you remember driving, driving across the bridge when the high wind condition, you see water splashing onto mm -hmm. the, the causeway salt in the bridge, water. salt water. And, um, and the new bridge will take care of that issue because we're going to raise the, the, uh, the elevation of the new bridge um, just to, uh, to meet that uh, elevation uh, requirement. And on top of looking at bridge replacement, we also looked at uh, future premium transit accommodation, you know, making connection between uh, uh, Hillsborough and Pinellas. Um, we also look at the express lanes. Uh, some of you may have heard that the, the department um, already started our feasibility study on express lanes within the Tampa Bay region, you know, looking at the entire interstate system to see where we can start uh, some express lane project like um, I-95 down south, uh, which is a very successful project. Um, and this is basically the recommended uh, alternative, the built alternative for replacing the uh, old bridge. You know, the, the way we're going to move forward is First, we're going to build a new um, northbound bridge between the two existing bridge. The reason we're doing that is because there's a space of 98 feet between the two existing bridges. And the new bridge, yeah, new bridge needs to be 75 feet wide. So if you think about it, that's really a, as wide as the bridge we can build bet between the two existing spans. So the plan is let's go, go in there, build a new span, and shift the traffic to the new bridge, then we can demolish the existing bridge, then we can further expand out if necessary. So that is basically the game plan um, for replacing the bridge. And obviously for uh, premium transit accommodation, um, we also looked at building a, a premium transit bridge, you know, on either side of the, of the, uh, uh, the bridge envelope, you know, we can either build it um, on top of the uh, existing bridge, or we can build it north of the existing bridge uh, envelope. So that is one of the options, and obviously the cost is about $1.4 billion for the entire project, including the new bridge um, for vehicle and also the new bridge for, um, for premium transit, as well as improvement along the causeway in order to make it wide enough to accommodate transit. And that's, that's uh, uh, kind of like a hybrid uh, uh, recommendation uh, that we have. Basically, you build a new bridge, then you go ahead and expand the bridge after you demolish the old one, so you make a, a very wide bridge, and, and, and then we're going to convert the, uh, um, the bridge in the middle to either light rail or some sort of premium transit bridge. And in order to do that, um, we are going to spend an extra $25 million um, to strengthen the new bridge. So that, that, that will help us uh, be in position to convert a bridge in the future to a rail bridge if necessary. So um, just kind of a looking into the future and looking into the future needs. So to spend uh, you know, extra money to, to uh, put in uh, more beams and more, more columns to strengthen the bridge. Um, basically the, the, uh, the geometry will be pretty much similar between uh, vehicular traffic and light rail anything beyond that will be uh, uh, more expensive to do. And that's another um, alternative we looked at, basically just looking at um, express lane only across the bridge, um, putting that in the middle. And we had two public hearings, um, one in Pinellas and one in uh, Hillsboro back in October, and quite a few people attend. And 
that's the uh, um, the comment we we uh, received total 72 and as you can see uh, most people show support for uh, some sort of premium transit or express link project and our schedule is wrapping it up now and submit that to a federal highway for approval and as Bob mentioned earlier that we already have the uh, bridge replacement uh, tentatively programmed uh, for 2019 so that's coming up okay so um, I just want to show you how that bridge project tied into the rest of the the region's uh, express lane project this map demonstrates um, the uh, the segment we're looking at for express lane um, it basically go from um, the, the gateway area um, on 275 up across the bridge um, through West Shore, through downtown, and all the way to Bears um, on the 275 corridor. On the I-4 corridor, you go from the uh, downtown interchange all the way out to Pope Parkway. And on I-75, you go from uh, South Hillsborough County all the way up to um, Bruce Street Down. So that is the, um, the segments we're looking at uh, right now for uh, um, initial implementation. Uh, we're still in the uh, feasibility stage. Uh, we're going to start our PD&E uh, uh, phase pretty soon. So, so that's overall um, the, the big picture for Express Lane. Uh, here's the, uh, the I-275 stable 60 interchange. Um, it's a big spaghetti there. And you know, the reason I'm showing this map to you is because I want to show you how important that is. Um, it, this project is to the entire region. If you look at it, um, from the, uh, the left corner there, that's coming from the Veteran Expressway. That's currently under expansion. So we're going to add two lanes each direction on the Veteran. So you're going to have a lot more traffic coming down. And on top of that, we're going to get rid of the uh, toll booth. People are going to come down to Gantry. So basically, you have traffic coming down unimpeded. So you think about all of a sudden, you add all the traffic to the interchange that stay with 60 and 275 you're going to see a lot of congestion in back up there. Um, from the bottom, that's from the Howard Franklin Bridge coming across. Now, we're talking about connecting um, the two counties through premium transit. But right now, um, that interchange cannot accommodate a transit corridor. Because you think about you going across the bridge, it's going toward the, um, the flyover, going to the airport. When you go underneath of it, you only have two lane each direction and a very small median. There's no way you can fit any more lane, a premium transit corridor through that. So we have to get that fixed. So that, that's a bottleneck we need to take care of. You look at the top corner, that's where the West Shore Intermodal Center is, in that general area. So in order to connect to the West Shore Intermodal Center, you need to have the corridor open up you know, in order to, to run premium transit through. So. Um, you know, that's just a, a very simple demonstration. You know, that is the, the existing typical section, you know, on 275, across the bridge. That's what you'll see. And that's what you will see in the, in the future once we improve the interchange. Not only are you going to have um, room for three general purpose lanes, you're going to have a, uh, 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 one express lane, and you also have a premium transit envelope in the middle. So this way, you can make a connection from Pinellas into Hillsboro, connecting to the West Shore Animal Center, and further into downtown. Because right now, um, in our construction project, we are freeing up the median within 275. So we're going to have a 44 feet of premium transit envelope in the middle of 275. So we're pretty much going to be set up all the way into downtown Tampa once the project's done. So it's very important uh, for us to realize that hey, you know, that really opened up uh, the bottleneck. So just give you a quick update on the, uh, um, the airport people mover and, and the West Shore intermodal project. Um, this is the, the post office. Um, that's the future consolidated rental car facility for the airport. And um, if you guys are familiar with Charlie Stick House, it's uh, somewhere over here. And that's 275. And that's the flyover from 275 from Pinellas, you know, across the bay on going to the airport. So um, for the West Shore Intermodal Center, you know, that's the general area we selected uh, for the site. And right here, 
In the median of 275, we have an area about 96 feet wide. So it's wide enough to fit a platform if we are to run light rail through the median of 275. So this is a perfect location um, to, to have a stop and um, whatever site we decide to have in a motor center, we can make connection um, to that site. Um, so that makes the ideal location. Now, the question is how do you connect the airport's automated people mover at this location to here? Because that is the airport's vision where they can run the extension all the way to the intermodal center. Passenger can actually ride premium transit into this station, check their baggage, hop on the auto automated people mover straight to the terminal. They don't have to worry about it. You know, they, they don't have to go, in, go into the, the check-in check -in level uh, at the uh, airport terminal anymore. So, so why now? Um, we are partnering with T-Barter and Tampa in International Airport to look at the most um, suitable route to make that connection. Now, keep in mind, this is, a, this is in at the runway. So we have some challenges there because this is a runway protection zone and we cannot run any elevated, um, uh, elevated uh, 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 transit through this area. So we have to look at you know, routes like this or make it add gray here or some, some sort. So we are still looking at the feasibility of that connection at this point. So that's where we are. Um, if you want more information on the Half Franklin Bridge uh, project, that's the uh, mytbi.com is the, uh, um, the website you can go into. Lots of documents embedded in that website and lots of good information. So with that, concluded. Any questions? Um, thank you, Ming, very much, and, and Bob. Um, this is the PSPA Legislative Committee. And we, as you heard uh, earlier, um, we hopefully will sometime in January go to Tallahassee and talk to our legislators. Yes. What would be uh, suggest, suggested advice that you would give to the PSA Legislative Committee to, um, to get these projects on the radar screen and, of course, our, our priorities uh, further along, which tie in right with this? Right. What would you um, say we should do? Good thing you asked the question because that's very important and yeah, that's why I'm making the presentation here. Um, right now, the funding for this entire interchange, we have design funded in 2019. That's tentative. Everything else, construction, um, they're funded in a second five-year plan, we call it, which is from um, 2019 all the way up to 2024. So that's really in the second five years. So if you think about it, um, if, if we can get everybody agreed on doing projects as one, you know, on I-275 corridor, you know, the Howard Franklin Bridge replacement project, the interchange project, and perhaps run the um, express link all the way into downtown Tampa as one big project, perhaps happening at the same time. You know, people who just love us for having all the construction uh, on the 275 corridor. But think about it. You know, once you get those projects done, we're set. You know, this, this is, you punch through, you know, the entire corridor. You're connecting Pinellas to the airport all the way to downtown Tampa. So that is something. Okay. I just want to go, go back to Brett's legislatively. Because we, we, as I mentioned, we specifically do these, you know, these asks every year. And no, agree with me in kind of that big picture. But we specifically asked for $100 million for right-of-way acquisition for this project. Because you can't do it until you own the land. And so you got, so that was one of the things, you know, we had a very one specific of the ask. And, and, and with, in talking with the legislature, with reasonable asks, you know, asking them for a billion dollars is that we're not going to get. But if you, you we, we just, we're, we're looking at trying to do these things incrementally, you know, that's a big number, but it's not an unreasonable ask depending upon the time frame. So that's to, to go what we did. And that is even more strongly supporting what I am about to say here because according to Bob's presentation, which you sat through as well, you know, I'm not a kid and I don't want to wait 20 years to see this stuff happen. And 
There's got to be a way, in my humble opinion, to uh, have this kind of um, presentation made to all of the delegations in the tea barter region. So we are all asking for the same thing at the same time. If you think about how many legislators that represents, well then, what's the problem? I mean, you, you said this is in the second five years? Why can't we all speak with one voice and get it bumped up to the first five? I mean, come on. Look, if, if the rate we're going, if the rate we're going, we could be talking about this. Transportation was a hot issue in 1970 in Pinellas County, and just last week did we take the action to actually move our green light project forward. So I don't want my grandkids to be sitting in this seat, you know. 30 or 40 years from now talking about the same stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, this it, is important to you're, everybody. You're absolutely right. We, we want things to happen. And, and the thing is, as Bob pointed out, you know, we, we had done planning for so long. You know, it, it's good to see things finally, finally coming together. We actually have a project to talk about. Seriously. You know, like, like this, you know, if people ask, you know, what project do you guys want? Well, I have a $500 million project sitting over here waiting, and it's such a, a, an important project to this region. It needs to happen sooner than later. So, um, yes, we want to happen sooner. <laughs> Thank you. And just, and just to clarify, the, the $100 million for right-of-way is part of the second five-year plan? No, we, we, by now, um, we, we had about $30 million or so right-of-way um, program in, in the first five, you know, in the current work program. But total is $100 million. Okay. To buy right away. In order for us to move into construction, you have to have right away secure. But then that's what Bob that's he part is asking. Asking. That's why he's asking right. for $100 million more. Yes. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yes. okay. Is, there, is there, in the spirit of three Ps, the public private partnership, mm -hmm. as it did down in Miami with some of the, um, the three billion dollar projects they had going on, is there any. Um, <clears throat> any opportunity for the people that own that right away to pledge it so they can be part of what's going on and have a, a right? Right away, we, we purchase it through uh, public funding. You know, we, 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 don't, we don't normally do P3 in right away phase. However, in construction, um, that, um, that's happening all over the country, all over the world, actually, uh, for construction. Um, firms can come in and, and uh, fill the funding gap, we call it. Say, you know, you, you have um, construction funded 10 years from now, but if the firm come in and say, I can build it for you now as long as I get a guarantee payback. Now, that's, that's something, some financial stuff that needs to be worked out by the expert and by the bank because we, we can't just keep committing future dollars to the project. You no, have to make it financially I'll, I'll, feasible. I was just wondering, was that doable to have um, the, the private um, uh, part of it pledged um, right away. In essence, they get transmitted or development because it's going to be where they're, they're doing it. Similar to what we have right now with the, uh, the owner of the property in Carolina pledging that mm -hmm. stadium. Obviously, he's going to build houses and condos around the stadium. So it's going to benefit him. So right. I'm just wondering, well, would, I mean, that, would that speed things up or do we have to wait five more years to get money to buy right away? I'm just trying to think outside the box and see if that's doable. Yeah, I, I think that needs to be willing participants. You know, as the department, we can really go out and say, hey, you know, donate some right away to us. Um, he, he can't say it because that's not their process. I understand. It's not. Understand. But, but, but the issue is, is that opportunity there? That opportunity is always there. Yeah, because people look at these maps and they're looking at where you're trying to do stuff and put stuff and they know what's going to happen. As I travel, you know, throughout mm -hmm. Boston, Phoenix, and recently fresh back from Seattle, um, as you go out to where the, the proposed uh, the rail or rail projects are coming, people are excited. Land is quadruple mm -hmm. value. I mean, they know what's coming, and, not, and they want it to accelerate. Like Janet said, they don't want to wait till uh, you know 100 years from now to try to get something done. Right. And, and also, lastly, would you also add this one to a regional planning presentation, or are you are you plan on doing it for Tampa Regional? Well, I mean, I. I'd be happy to do presentations. 
because maybe the guys here are going to see what this is the other yeah. side of the bridge. On the same yeah. Not the same you know, um, something that I think is interesting and something that I think would be great for PSTA, and it does tell us with green light and our whole regional aspect, but you know, the whole five year work program of FDOT is the money, and this is history, but it's allocated by county. So you have to even. You have to, in order to read it, it's very hard to read and even look at the Howard Franklin Bridge because it's in two counties, right? And so they split the money up in Hillsborough and Pinellas. This project is in Hillsborough. Right. And in all of the scorekeeping about who gets the money, it's a Hillsborough project. But it's never been supported really or, you know, advocated for really strongly by Hillsborough. It's really Pinellas that has to push this because it's tied to the whole Howard Franklin Bridge. It's Ming just gave a whole PowerPoint on the both projects are really totally combined, right? Uh, well, then we're not we're not messaging it properly. I don't know how anybody can listen to this and see it and not recognize this is the future. Yeah, well, it, think, it's I about think, the future. It I is about the regional looking at the core and all the projects together and having that context. Maybe you cannot say the word billion and get a legislator to listen to you. You have to. But see, put it in bite sized pieces, but it is old system. I think it is when they, when you got the other side singing that regional song. That's all they sing, like the range of regional asset. They're singing that to Well, this is regional planning. This is region that's going to benefit them, even though it's not in Pinellas. So if they truly believe in regional, it's just a, a catchphrase that they use, then this is going to benefit them, period. So <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Megan. And um, thank you. Um, that was really, really helpful. And thank you. That'll be helpful information when we go to Tallahassee yeah. in the next few weeks. Um, okay. Well, if there is there any other business? No, we will uh, be communicating with you all about the trip. <laughs> and the virtual trip. <laughs> oh, what my mission might be. I don't think it's probably going to be on that. Yeah, I, I would say to, to take that off our calendars. As soon as we hear something, we'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to make some calls today, right? Let's see if I can get a feel for what the calendar is. Okay. Great. Thank you. And thank you again for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, thank you, May. Thank you, Robert. Okay, we're joined. Thanks. Thank you, Dorothy. Have a great holiday. Merry Christmas, everybody.